Dudes behind the foods, listeners. Life insurance gives your family a safety net that can cover expenses so they won't have to worry about money while getting back on their feet. Luckily, Policy Genius, who we are sponsored by today, makes finding the right policy simple and their team of licensed experts are on hand to help you talk through it. You don't know what's going on in your life. You could be suddenly walking down the street and then all of a sudden an action-packed movie scene happens and it's Arnold Schwarzenegger telling you there's a bomb in there and then you have to just tuck and get out the way. Who knows? With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $2.92 per year for one million dollars of coverage some options offer same day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams so your loved ones deserve a financial safety net you deserve a smarter way to find and buy it head to policygenius.com slash dudes or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save that's policygenius.com slash dudes Step into a world of non-stop action on DraftKings Casino. Play the classics like Blackjack, Roulette, and Slots, plus enjoy exclusive games you can't find anywhere else. Right now, new customers can get a deposit match up to $100 in casino credits when you deposit $5 or more. Download the DraftKings Casino app now. Sign up with promo code DUDEFOODS, that's D-U-D-E-F-O-O-D-S, and new customers get a deposit match up to $100 in casino credits when you deposit $5 or more. Only on DraftKings Casino with promo codes DUDEFOODS. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Please play responsibly in partnership with Hollywood Casino and Charlestown Races in West Virginia. All games regulated by the West Virginia Lottery. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. 21 plus. Physically present in Connecticut, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, West Virginia only. Void in Ontario. One per opted in. New customer. Minimum $5 deposit. Max match $100 in casino crest, which require one times play through within seven days. See terms at casino.draftkings.com slash players choice. Restrictions apply. The diaspora, David. The Asian diaspora. <laughs> I still, to this day, don't know what that word means. I have trouble finding the correct emphasis on which syllable to put. It's diaspora, dude. I <laughs> thought it was diaspora for the longest time, but then that's a shoe brand, I think. <laughs> Did you see that that trend where it was that lady said, "What is a word that you mispronounce that has haunted you for the for your whole life?" <laughs> yeah. And do so many people have? I know some of them are fake, right? Mm -hmm. But there are. I could tell when somebody tells their story, it's like, you for sure said that before. I have one I can't remember because I buried it so deep because how fucking embarrassed I was. Yeah. It was in my world history class, and I don't remember the word that it was, but I just remember feeling my heart sink into my stomach because <laughs> the teacher laughed at me. What's a word that you will never be able to spell without double checking? Oh, shit. There's a lot, dude. I always struggle with professor if it's one or two f's one f is it robin <laughs> sorry we were talking about words that we struggle with what'd you say professor, professor. how many f's in that one. first one i think oh now i'm scared see this is what he did <laughs> yeah, we're gonna google it right now <laughs> yes one f one F, you are correct. Oh, you know what? That just reminded me. There's this one clip. I don't consistently. I didn't consistently watch How I Met Your Mother, but there's one clip where Ted is. It's his first day <laughs> teaching, and he's writing professor on the chalkboard, and he he writes the first F, and he writes the <laughs> he's writing the second F, and then he gets there and he's like, and then and then he looks at a student and she's like, he goes, <laughs> E. e. <laughs> 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 That's tight. Uh, but yeah, man, um, I was going to ask you, because we've been sipping a little bit. This is our second episode. We've been sipping now. What kind of drunk are you, David? So I am the happy drunk that wants to pay for everything. Amazing. I very much have used a lot of money when I lived in K-Town, because I was just like, you know what? YouTube money's good. Let me just pay for the homies. And that would add up like a motherfucker because I wouldn't even see what the bill is. Mm. And then it would be like, oh, that bill was $800. Oh, that bill was $1,000. Do 
Do you want to hear my worst story about that? Have I told you this before? Probably. Tell me. If you listen to the No Chaser podcast, you've definitely heard this story. Beto, I'm going to tell you again. On the dudes behind the foods. Because we here. We out here. And not only are we here, but I fucking love this guy. <laughs> First of all, I- <laughs> the fuck is with your hat, dude? What is that? I'll tell you right now. I haven't had a haircut in like two and a half weeks. Same here. Which is, but here's what happens is my sides gets, once my sides start to fluff past my ears, I just feel like, I feel just disgusting, all right? So I decided to wear a hat that covered up the sides Stop so it. I could feel cute. That's going to fucking haunt me for the rest of my <laughs> life. That fucking image right there. <laughs> Do you, can you go sideburns? No, not like that. Not like si- not like ludicrous sideburns. I told you my friend in high school who said that my sideburns look like Japanese pussy hair. <laughs> and then I was so embarrassed. Yeah, you do have pixelated cheeks when your uh, when your <laughs> hair goes out. That's what he also said too. <laughs> and then it, he roasted me so hard, I didn't know what to say. <laughs> it just out of nowhere cuz I think we're talking about facial hair or something. I don't actually remember what it is. Mm-hmm. But he basically said like David got Japanese pussy hair for sideburns and everybody died laughing. Yeah. And I wanted to say something now. And I was like, fuck you or whatever. But then he ended it with like, when he walks by, he has to pixelate the side of his head. Hilarious. And then everybody just died laughing. That's a great joke because we all understand. And I couldn't think of a comeback because the joke was so good. I was trying not to laugh. Yeah, you know, you just got to let that one live. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, don't laugh. You got to come back with something. I was just like, you fucking. And all I kept thinking was, damn, that's good, dude. That's so fucking good. You know what's great? Before I get to my club story. Um... There's the Japanese are beginning to unpixelate the porn, bro. There's there's fully unpixelated Japanese porn now. This man is a connoisseur, <laughs> by the way. The squeakier the better for him. If they sound like mice, he loves it. First of all, I enjoy all kinds of porn. You know that, okay? And just like sometimes I'm in the mood for a nice fresh sashimi or a nice hot bowl of ramen sometimes i like some japanese pornography pixelation Uh, and all the noise it's just not for me Hmm. women very beautiful Mm -hmm. the noise not for me i don't like i will tell you this though if you guys did watch porn back in the day Mm -hmm. uh japanese porn years ago wouldn't have some of the ladies not so attractive Hmm. i feel like it wasn't the career move to make Especially like Japanese society wise, like why would you do this unless this was your last option type of thing? You know, I think that's, you know, it's all in the eye of the beholder, David, because I've seen some attractive uh, older Japanese porn. 15, like 15 years ago? 15 years ago, let's see, I was three years old, so. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> You're three years old, huh? Yeah. I was, I was three, five years old, so I don't know. I wasn't really watching porn <laughs> back then. Three, five years old, so. And when you were three or five, you, you definitely were watching porn. <laughs> <laughs> Sawati, yes. <laughs> well, Robin Couch. Well, I was going to say, I was at a club, and uh, I uh, my, my worst my worst paying for shit story. <laughs> this fool conceded from while and out was in town, and uh, he doesn't drink at all. But he understands. Yeah, he does not drink. He doesn't smoke. N- nothing. Amazing. Yeah, but he loves. You know, he he understands the club experience. Everyone likes to go out. Everyone likes to drink. So he's probably one of the only people who's always willing to um, buy bottles with me at a club. Buy bottles at the club. Get a little table. You know what I'm saying? Pour some up for everybody. And so one night, he was in LA. He was like, "You down to buy some bottles?" I'm like, "Sure." Um, so we're buying bottles at this club. It might have been for Wild and Out because DC was in town. Emmanuel Hudson was in. Yeah, I think we're probably after Wild and Out in LA. Anyways, we bought a bunch of bottles at this club. I got very drunk, okay? Very, very, very drunk because I passed out, uh, blacked out. Didn't pass out, blacked out. Didn't really remember what happened. Don't remember how I got home <clears throat> until I woke up to a phone call from Conceited. And I'm like, what's up? He's like, yo, what? What's wrong with you last night? I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, what made you feel like you were French Montana buying three bottles of Ace at the bottle at the at the at the table? I'm like, three bottles of Ace of Spades? That's a very expensive champagne. At the at the at the fucking club, it's even more expensive, right? I check my bank account, fucking four K out of my account, dog. Like it was like a thousand dollars per bottle. 
Fucking. <laughs> By the way, when I say I spent like eight hundred to a thousand dollars, that was for like twelve people. <laughs> there was food and drinks, so it was like meals. Mm. You know what I mean? With appetizers, mm-hmm. soju, beer. You just bought bottles of champagne. Yeah, that is crazy. Yeah. At least we walked away full. No, uh, no. This was just a uh, a bunch of pretty girls just buzzed off champagne. <laughs> Probably. So check it out. I had a... No, let's not say that. She's not my friend. But so, Ooh, burn oh, you, bitch! No, because we only, we only hung out like two or three times, so mm-hmm. I wouldn't call her a friend. But, mm-hmm. you know, uh, she's somebody that I know through somebody else, right? Mm-hmm. But she would tell me uh, when she would work in the strip club genre. Mm-hmm. She wasn't a stripper, but she was a, a manager oh, manager, at a, <laughs> oh. manager at a strip club. Okay. And the objective of the girls at strip clubs, and she said, because she worked at uh, in Vegas, strip clubs or clubs is that these girls, that's their objective, to mm-hmm. come in and make sure you buy as much bottles. So they'll, one of the taxes that she said that they would do is they would just come up, get like an expensive top shelf liquor, and just pour the alcohol down the person's throat. Oh, and they're just hard. Ah! And you're charged for it because you just drank it, and then you pass around, everybody's drinking. Well, guess what? You just got charged for the fucking bottle. That's foul. Yeah, so wow. that's what these girls would do. That was like a tactic. Damn, I've never been bamboozled like that. You know, I, I remember. <laughs> I would have just been like this. We're about the port. Nope. <laughs> I just, just poured the cup. Hold on. <laughs> nice uh, try. Put it back in the <laughs> bottle. I did not partake. <clears throat> My first few experiences at the strip club, I remember being very annoyed. I like, you know, you'd be getting a lap dance from a girl, and then the 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 girl that walked you to your little area would be like. Okay, and drink for the girl, and it's like, oh, okay, yeah, fine, whatever, right? Now it's like, or like. As I got older, I, I understood. I'm like, okay, yeah, I get it. It's kind of what they do. You, you get a drink for the girl. Everyone gets paid, blah, blah, blah. But before, when in your broke days, right, Ugh. when you're going to the strip club and you're like, oh, uh, man. Like me and Rick, we always make jokes that we used to tell each other, all right, you're only going to spend $100, bro. We're going to spend $100. Maybe we'll, just 20, we'll tip 20 We'll get a couple lap dances and get out of there. And then we leave broke. Blue balls. How much did you spend? Three hundred. Ah, no. Hundred <laughs> percent. I would have those one of those random great moments where it's like, you would hit the slots and you would just come up like a few hundred bucks, mm. and it was amazing. Because mm-hmm. now it's like, oh, we don't have to skimp as much as we did before. Mm-hmm. One time, uh, we were doing these things. At, uh, there was this a casino that was pretty close to Sacramento. It was like an Indian casino. They would do these things where they would give you. It was an incentive to get people to gamble at the place. So they would give you like a free twenty bucks to bet on football games, mm. right? I don't know what was happening at the time, but it was just free money. And yeah. when we would win, we would win big. We win like 500, 600 bucks like these every weekend that the game would play. We stacked that shit up, made so much fucking money, but guess what? They get you because you get addicted mm-hmm. to gambling, lost it all and then some. Damn. I should have just walked away with those few grand and I would have been happy. My dad's friend, this is the funniest fucking story. So one of my dad's friends, it's this couple, this sweet couple. They've been together for so long. They're still together. It's this little Asian, this little Thai man. He looks like the Monopoly guy, all right? But Asian, all right? <laughs> this little, this is little gray raisin. He's adorable. <laughs> the softest spoken little Thai man, all right? And he has his wife, you know, uh, Asian woman, bob-ish haircut. She's also very soft spoken, very sweet. <laughs> and apparently this fool loves to gamble, all right? It's what I learned as I got older. And, um... And my dad told me this story where this fool, like, went to Vegas one weekend, gambled away so much of their money. Like, just money that they were not ready to lose, okay? He came back, tried to confess to her, <laughs> and was like, honey, you know, being his little fucking demure, little soft-spoken Monopoly guy, Orville Redenbacher <laughs> self. Orville Redenbacher. Right? Just like so, just, hey, honey, I'm sorry I lost this much money. She fucking loses it, jumps on him and starts strangling him. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> like a cartoon, dog. She gets pissed, starts, ah! cho- yes. starts choking him. Uh, yeah, he died. <laughs> no, he did. No, 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 I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, my God. No, 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 they're still married. It's, it's fine. It's fine. That, you know, that little joke that you did right there? Remind, uh, so I, was, I posted this on my story, but there was a dude at a coffee shop they were chilling at and he kind of looked like Bobby Lee. Okay. This motherfucker, dude, we're sitting there. And, you know, when you're outside at a coffee shop, the vibe is chill yeah. and quiet. Yeah, yeah. This guy sits down. I know everything about that dude's life because ah. of how 
loud he was talking. <laughs> he just sits down. He's talking to his friend. He starts talking about how much money he's making now, which then somehow goes into the fact that he's broke because mm-hmm. he's not making as much money as before. But he did this one thing that I fucking spit my coffee up, even though it wasn't supposed to be funny because yeah. of how socially fucked he is. Yeah. He goes, he's talking about whatever money issues. And then all of a sudden he goes, hey, so, oh, I actually have this funny story. So my friend got into a car accident yesterday and uh, she just, she died. <laughs> I went, I started crying. And then you can tell this person that's listening to the story goes, huh. (laughs) But he's so crazy, he doesn't understand. And I kept listening to the story about where the joke was coming. There was no joke. He just told this depressing story about a friend who just got hit by a car and died. Oh, God. I was like, how is that funny? There's no segue here. Speaking of uh, of Matt TV and Bobby Lee, that exact scenario reminds me of this old Matt TV skit, right? Where uh, (laughs) there's this guy at a bar. He's talking to some guy he just met at the bar. He's like, yeah, man, how's it going over here? You know, last night I, I met this girl. Take her back to my apartment, right? We're butt naked. And we're like, uh, uh. And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, uh. And then this guy's like telling the story super loud. People are turning around at him and looking at the bar. He's like, excuse me, nosy. Can I get some privacy? I'm trying to tell a story here. It's God. He turns around. Yeah, so I'm like, oh, we're going at it, we're boning, like, oh, it's like screaming this disgusting story. <laughs> That's basically what that is. <laughs> the fucking SNL sketch that I sent you had me crying, laughing. Of course, you already saw it, mm. but it was the one where he's like, the dude is in a wheelchair and he's like making fun of the dude. Mm. And he goes, hey, man, you know what? <laughs> we're going to be the bigger guy. We're going to walk away from you. He goes, you know what? Better yet, let's roll out. <laughs> like yeah. making fun of disabled people is retarded <laughs> yes well that's yeah because it's making fun of like old like after yeah. school specials and it's crazy because there's been different these these different it's it's crazy how much times have changed right yeah because there's legit not even sketches not funny shit like tiktoks of old commercials mm-hmm. where back when yes because because people were like mentally retarded mm-hmm. you know uh, retarded was the term, right? Yeah. And it's crazy how jarring it is because you watch these old commercials, right? Because that was the PC term back yes, in the day. Yes, it's like it's like yeah. it's just the medical term, right? Yeah. And you know, of course, society takes it, flips it, uses it in a derogatory way. So now yeah. it's a derogatory term. Yeah. But you look, you you hear that shit, and there's one where it's just like, help donate to help retarded kids. <laughs> It's like, oh, shit. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. It was a random commercial that had nothing to do with anything. And it goes like, Pedialyte, it's great for children. And then it goes into this like PSA, retarded people are people. Too. Yeah, it's like, yeah, what yeah, the yeah, fuck yeah, is this? It hits you like, oh, God. All right. Well, we're going to donate. We'll be right back. Are you about to die? Well, what are you going to do about your family you left behind, you bloody idiot? (laughs) Hey, look, we're all going to die one day. And you know what? I hate to tell you this, but uh, there's going to be people behind that need your help, right? I got two beautiful babies at home and one beautiful wife and one amazing side chick. Just kidding. (laughs) But look. Life insurance gives your family a safety net that can cover expenses so they won't have to worry about money while getting back on their feet, okay? Luckily, Policy Genius makes finding the right policy simple and their team of licensed experts are on hand to help you talk through it. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $2.92 per year for $1 million worth of coverage. Some options offer same day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Policy Genius has licensed, award winning agents who can help you find the best fit for your needs. They work for you, not the insurance companies. That means they don't have an incentive to recommend one insurer over another so you can trust their guidance, all right? Policy Genius is for parents, caregivers, and anyone else who has people who depend on them. They simplify the process of getting life insurance so you can protect the people you love. I got a lot of people that depend on me, and you never know what can happen in life. Look, a flash flood could hit the studio right now, and Lord knows I can't tread water. I'm a terrible swimmer. I will drown and die, all right? So if you're like me, then you need help. Your loved ones deserve a financial safety net. You deserve a smarter way to find and buy it. Head to policygenius.com slash dudes or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com slash dudes. Well, let's try some vegan cookies that may not be vegan. Robin Couch brought us cookies. Some are vegan, some are not. We have box one, box number two. David So. 
it's a bomb and do. I'm very curious, but I think you'll get it. But I just want to see the comparison at the end of the day. Hey, have a little faith in your people. Uh, I have all the faith in my people. <laughs> Wow, can I just say something off jump? Both look very delicious. They look great. Can't tell by the look test. They just look slightly different, but they look delicious in different ways. They look like different types of cookies, yes. but you can't tell by looking at it if anything is vegan. No. Nah. And the part that makes it vegan is the fact they didn't use butter? Eggs? No eggs, milk, or butter. Got you, got you, got you. So there's no milk in this chocolate? There's uh, no... Um, is is uh, is there vegan salt? Oh, let's see. Use this one first. This one, okay. Cheers. Cheers. So we're trying the same cookie. David and I, David So and I are trying the same wow. cookie. This is from batch number two. Two. Here we go. Chocolatey smelly. It was mm -hmm. delicious. Mm -hmm. Great cookie. Oh, right fuck what this is. This is tasty. Right off the bat. Oh, wow. Delicious. Does not strike me as vegan mm. upon first taste. Okay. Fluffy. But crispy on the exterior, mm -hmm. delicious chunks of chocolate. Chocolate I mean, is sweet and silky. Phenomenal mouth feel. I would say, <laughs> I would say, not to be pretentious, but whoever the chef is, is an artiste. I would like to. Have his mouth feel in my mouth feel. I wonder how his dick feels. Delicious. Samesies. <laughs> All right. Here we go. From batch number one. Ooh, from King Batch number one. King Batch number one, Andrew Bachelor, Netflix star. Netflix we go. star, bad movies. Oh, this is good too. Also, Great cookie. I would never guess that one of these was vegan. Phenomenal. Wow. Great. I mean, they're both fucking delicious. Mm -hmm. um, Robin Couch is number one vegan. Wait, wait, wait. I didn't get a chance to. to, to both uh, of you can guess and then I will reveal. Thank you, Robin Couch. God, he doesn't know how to play games or what? <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> he loves you, but he thinks there's something fucking wrong with you. This is how he talks to Veda when she plays games. <laughs> No, that's how I talked to Q. No wonder she barfed when she got home from the airport. Oh, my baby. <laughs> Q no. also barfed, but he didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> Man up! <laughs> um, hmm. Wow, that's tough. Yeah, we'll go. Great cookies, first of all. From, 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 where is this place? Insomnia Cookies. Insomnia Cookies. Well, I would stay up late for these. Damn. That was sexy. Thank you. <laughs> It's gonna have chocolate in my throat. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite kind of way to live. Oh, hey, dude, she's fucking nasty. Hey, Ricky Shucks. <laughs> um, that's my black friend, Robin. Uh, if you didn't get the joke. Okay, so. <laughs> uh, Number one is vegan. And it's not a taste thing for me, by the way. It's only because I've had vegan cookies and it has a similar texture. Um, but I will tell you afterwards which one I prefer. In my head, right, I feel like you assume, like, or the, the average taster, not like David So, would assume that the fluffier one is the not vegan one because you think there's more shit in there, right? But then I don't trust people. So my thought process is maybe they're making it extra fluffy to overcompensate for the fact that they can't add the shit that would normally make shit fluffy. Just to play the game, I will say... Um, you said number one is, is, vegan. is your vote, right? Uh, that also would have been my vote, but I will say number two. Robin, the vegan cookie is number one. Wow. Well, would you look at that? Wow, great job, vegan insomniacs. <sighs> I do appreciate the validation that they're both delicious cookies, though. Can I tell you which one I prefer? Yes, please. The vegan one. Really? I prefer the vegan one. Texture-wise, crispier. And so I have a friend named Lainey mm -hmm. who makes vegan cookies, and she does it with almond flour. And the ah. I, I'm not sure which flour they're using for this one, but almond flour cookies have this like very delicious like toasted, roasted flavor to it mm. and this crunch. And that's why I fucking love vegan cookies. Um, obviously, these, this one here has a leavening agent. 
I don't know what, exactly what, which this is delicious as well. But texture-wise, toastiness-wise, this one's way better. Mm, interesting. Yeah, those I believe are made with regular flour. Insomnia Cookies also makes gluten-free cookies. See that crunch? But I like crispy cookies, though. What? I like a soft cookie with a little bit of that crisp, is mm-hmm. what you're saying. Mm. Mm. They're good. Ah, wow. That's mm. great. David So, did you believe in Santa Claus? No, I didn't. I was the kid that ruined other people's lives. You were that fucking asshole third grader. No, because I just didn't know what the concept of Santa was. I just uh. thought it was like this, you know, like a cartoon character or something. Mm. You know what I mean? So I didn't understand that Santa was something that kids actually believe in. I thought it was just like a thing. You know what I mean? Wow. So it was the only Santa in my life at the time was Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Stop vaping. <laughs> you don't need to vape. <laughs> you don't need to vape. Clouds in my lungs, but I breathe in the blood of Jesus Christ. Christ. Crikey, Australia, Steve Irwin stabbed me in my heart where it beats for God. (laughs) Beats for God, beats by Dre, N-W-A, A, B, C, D, E, F, I'm a G, original gangster, found Jesus Christ, now call me the son of J.C., J. C. Jesus Christ, just chilling. <laughs> WWJD. What would Jesus do? What would Jesus don't? What would Jesus eat? Bread. Bread is the food of life. Cereal. Ooh. Government told me it was good for me. Turns out high in carbohydrates and processed sugar. Carbohydrates, carbo by life. Carbo, hello. Cholesterol, cholesterol. All of us. All. <laughs> Of me, John Legend. Whoa. Light skin preferable. No dark skin. Sweet blacker the berry. Sweeter the juice. Juice world. He died. Whoa. Like Jesus Christ for our sins. The new Jesus Christ for the youth. Wrong. <laughs> Satan. Amen. God is good. God is good, everybody. All the time. <laughs> yeah, so if this is your first time at church, remember, if you don't want to give to the church right now because you're visiting, absolutely don't do it. <laughs> when the dish passes around, remember, we just here for your support. If you guys, you know what? Matter of fact, everybody, if you're, I want everyone to close their eyes. If you're accepting Jesus Christ into your life right now, please raise your hand. I hated altar calls mm. after like the fifth one. Yes. Because... They would always, like, jip you into eventually going up, right? Mm-hmm. Because, yeah, the first one, everyone close your eyes, okay? Well, you know, you're not, we're not, we just close your eyes. We're not going to look at our neighbors. If this is your first time accepting Jesus Christ into your heart, you know, like, raise your hands. And then, you know, you kind of like, you know, you're like, oh, shit. Okay, cool. Judgment free. I'm going to raise my hand. And then they would do altar, come down to the altar. No one's going to watch. No one's going to look. We're going to pray for you. Accept Jesus Christ in your heart, blah, 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 right? It's great. Awesome. And then after like the third one, I'm like, cool. I don't have to go up there. I'm chilling. They're talking to these heathens out there, right? I'm going to chill in my chair. These heathens. <laughs> I, I go, Y'all are the sinners. I accepted Jesus Christ like two months ago. I'm good. You're sitting in church. You're kind of like, all right, cool, whatever. You're waiting. And then all of a sudden it's like, and then like 10 minutes later, the pastor's like, okay, now, okay, eyes are still closed. Heads are still down. If you feel like you might have done something that you need help with you need jesus help come down to the altar it's like god i didn't feel like going to the altar today yeah (laughs) there's a lot of pressure on that dude and let me tell you something i never went up (laughs) (laughs) i never did they would always do that if you're feeling the spirit of christ and they would be like raise your hand i would raise my hand up now please come down i would put it right back down (laughs) 
lot. I ain't feeling it that much, man. It's so much. It's every time. I'm not doing it, man. I just came here to to hear the good word. I'm not here to get up and walk down there and have people watch me. Yeah, man. Because right? you know all those fucking Christians are liars. No one had their eyes closed. Yes, they did. Let me tell you something. You know what my old technique was? Mm. Is that when I just didn't want to stand up during praise, I would just pretend like I'm praying, but I'm actually just sleeping. So I would clasp my hands and I would rest my head on this chair in front of me. So it looks like I'm praying deeply. I was just knocked out. You are a heathen. I am not. I was connecting to God through my dreams. Facts. Dude, and God knows my heart and it is pure. I want to be in the light as you are in the light. You know this one? I do, but I don't. This wasn't my one of my favorite songs, so I can't remember the lyrics. This was actually one of the, uh, it was a more of like a, it was actually a band. I didn't <laughs> realize this so I was singing it in a a vlog one day and someone was like oh look at Tim singing blah 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 by whatever I was like oh shit this is an actual like this is like a a, like a legit song like a radio single that was out I know you ever go to like youth camp yes I did I was actually a a leader at multiple youth camps like at the camps you were like doing the leading yeah let me tell you this one story a funny ass story (laughs) there's so many youth camp stories but I'm only gonna we don't have fucking five days on this uh so when I wanted to become a youth pastor, mm-hmm. right, uh, you know, you're doing like online seminary school, you're doing all this other stuff, but in, in between you're like a, what's the word I'm looking for? It's like an intermediary pastor. There's another word for it, it starts with the I. Mm. But I had to take these kids to Mexico, mm. right? <laughs> Um, and there was another time I had to take these kids to Arizona. Okay. So Arizona was like the the beginner one before you go to Mexico. So like how we would do it in our mission trips, depending on whatever you know missionary group you're a part of, there's like beginner stage stuff, right? Okay. You don't get to go straight to like the heart of like the hardest places on earth. And actually, one of the most difficult places that you go to when you try to evangelize people is actually Japan. Really? They're highly agnostic. Oh. Right, so uh, you don't get to go to Japan unless you go to the other places, and the other places you think are a lot rough, right? Because you want to go to Japan because it's fun. Hell yeah! But you're for in terms of like evangelizing heaven people, yeah. Yeah. heaven yeah, Japan is not the one. Uh, so we go to Arizona, and there's this, there's these moments where people give their testimonials, okay? Right, and I used to get very irritated <laughs> at people who would give their testimonials, but they would ham it up, mm. right? So they're trying to tell this story. And because we've seen body language and the way that like pastors speak, mm. they imitate it through like osmosis. So mm. when they're telling you the story, like I'm telling my story, I was like, hey, I'm from Sacramento, blah, blah, blah. Like my father's a pastor. You know, I decided I want to do this because of blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. You know, tell them a little bit about my life, not the whole thing, because, you know, I don't want to do all that. All right. This motherfucker, dog. I got in trouble <laughs> because I couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> because okay. he starts like this. I, I'm, I'm not lying. This okay. is how he started. Hand of God. He goes like this. <sighs> <laughs> Immediately I go. <laughs> 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 right? He's telling this story. And I thought it was something going to be something crazy. Yeah. He tells a story about his dog who ran away. Okay. And that was the whole story. And then I just, he just keeps dramatizing it throughout the whole thing. And then. I looked out. Mm. The dog just wasn't there. <laughs> and like, come on. At this point, how the fuck am I supposed to not laugh? Well, who are you to judge, David So? I am Judge Dredd. Oh, I pfft. am the executioner. You are Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> That's my Sylvester Stallone impression. Well, maybe he had a very close relationship with his dog and his dog leaving (sighs) is what made him realize that everybody in this life can leave you David so no matter how dependent you are on somebody everybody in the physical world can and will leave you but Jesus Christ will stay with you forever he will throw you into this break (laughs) after we come back from this break Stop. 
step into a world of nonstop action on DraftKings Casino. Dudes behind the foods, listeners, play the classics like blackjack, roulette, and slots. Plus, enjoy exclusive games you can't find anywhere else. Right now, new customers can get a deposit match up to $100 in casino credits when you deposit $5 or more. All you have to do is sign up, select the offer, make your deposit, and start playing from a full suite of games. Your way is the only way to play on DraftKings Casino. Play online on your time and your space and within your means. It's safe, secure, and reliable so you can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you're ready. Download the DraftKings Casino app now. Sign up with promo code DUDEFOODS and new customers get a deposit match up to $100 in casino credits when you deposit $5 or more. Only on DraftKings Casino with promo code DUDEFOODS. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Please play responsibly in partnership with Hollywood Casino and Charlestown Races in West Virginia. All games regulated by the West Virginia Lottery. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. 21 plus, physically present in Connecticut, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, West Virginia only, void in Ontario, one per opted in new customer, minimum $5 deposit, at max match $100 in casino credits, which require one times playthrough within seven days. See terms at casino.draftkings.com slash players choice. Restrictions apply. Have you ever noticed the word woof mm. has two O's in it? That, my friend, is not a coincidence. Mm. That is God's divinity because with those two O's are just like your eyes. God wants you to see the greatness when he speaks loudly and clearly like the sound of when a dog barks. When a dog barks, preach on, Brother David, but also when a dog barks, he will tell you that life is rough. Life is rough. And also, there are times when you not you will not have a wolf <laughs> over you. And those are the times that you need to pray to your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Why can't Christians be more like the house dog? Mm. When your dog sees you and you come, through, he does not hide his emotions and his love for you. But why is it as a Christian, when you go out into the real world, you must hide your love for God? Why? Because of your shame. Does your dog do that? Mm -mm, he licks his butthole proudly. And if you are a cat person, we do not discriminate, David. So because the Lord not. said, go tell it on the mountain. <laughs> and listen, God doesn't need you to be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, stay away from that pussy. <laughs> <laughs> and ladies, you need to stop being so catty. <laughs> Hey, man. Hey, dude, we went into the wrong profession, man. Hey, fuck the spoken word, dog. Pastors. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> I, I remember, like, the difference when I went from uh, all Korean church to, mm -hmm. like, an all black church. Mm -hmm. And it was so fucking different. Yeah, I bet. Like, Korean churches, we have, like, our Christian rock or whatever. Oh, whatnot, God. Right? Yeah. And then when I saw <laughs> Sister Act in real life. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, wow, these people sing so much better than us. Mm. They were harmonizing the melodies. Everything was just so beautiful. And I really do believe like that's where people feel God a lot mm. is when they listen to that music. Yeah. It kind of like hits your soul in a weird ass way. Yeah. And it's from that music. It just feels very powerful. And I went back to my church. I look at this stupid ass. <laughs> you fucking suck at the guitar and you're off key. Well, look, man, look. I, so I went to a Christian school and I went to Catholic school for one year, right? I went to Catholic high school for one year. Shout out to Bishop Montgomery. But um, I did not know how different Christian school was or Christianity was to Catholicism until I went to an actual, uh, started going to mass for a year. And that shit's so Boring. different, bro. It's crazy how different it is. Because even the Christian school I went to, um, it was super diverse, Gardena Valley Christian School, shout out to GVCS, Vikings. Um, you know, it was fun. Church was fun. We sing songs, the, 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 um, it was like it was the the the, the pastor was funny, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? It was, jokes, yeah, relatable. bro. Like the sermons were were fun, right? And then when I went to Catholic school for a year, bro, and like 
It was so robotic. Sit up. It's very uh, ritualistic. Yeah. Yes. Stand up. Sit down. Stand up. Sit down. We're chanting. We're fucking. We're all doing the same. I don't even know how to do all it. All that kneeling made the Catholic girls a little crazy. I mean, look. Facts. Fan. <laughs> but yeah, I when I was dating a Catholic girl, uh, you know, my, my, my dad originally started off as Catholic mm. before he became Christian. Mm-hmm. And so I went to like a traditional, I mean, if you guys have been to traditional Catholic weddings, the longest shit ever, mm. right? But uh, went to, what do you call They don't call it a service, right? Do they? I don't know. I wasn't Catholic, so I wouldn't know. Please correct me in the comments. But I just, like the whole ritual thing with the whole, the, 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 where they walk down with this smoke thing going on. So this is, was this, this is, for Easter? I it's mass, remember. right? It's just yeah, mass. mass or something, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? And uh, I remember that something that really actually surprised me was the priest mm. was uh, reciting verses from the Bible without reading the Bible. Oh, where? So he like memorized. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if that's like typically mm. of what a what a priest does, but it was pretty fucking amazing. But I just remember falling asleep mm. constantly. I was trying not to fall asleep my hardest, but it was just they were just reading scripture mm. constantly, mm-hmm. just for an hour straight. Sheesh! So I could do that at home, man. I want to hear some jokes. Yeah, I want to hear the. The, the pussy jokes. I want to hear the relation to the purrs. <laughs> I wanted all those connections. Speaking of which, um, one time my boy took me to, a, and I've told this story before, but uh, just to touch on this part, my boy took me to an all-male church that happens on Saturday. I think those are the seven-day Adventists, okay? And um, so it's all all dudes. And the preacher, it was, and it was like majority, like it was majority black church, right? And the preacher was, he started telling like penis jokes, you know what I'm saying? And I remember thinking, oh shit, I've never had this experience before, but like, yeah, they weren't quote unquote sinful jokes. It was just like dick jokes. You know what I'm saying? It was like, oh yeah, we're all dudes here. We can talk about our dicks without like someone getting uncomfortable. Like, this, yeah, is, yeah. this is kind of crazy, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh yeah, that's right. I think, you know, I think it's important to remember that, um, you know, God has a sense of humor. <laughs> I think God has a great sense of humor, man. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. Well, this is not really funny, but <laughs> the last few days, like something has been off in the air. Mm. Uh, all these disasters started happening. Uh, I saw a dude. Oh, I saw a dude. Yeah. Fucking passed out on the floor. So apparently he had a stroke. Okay. But let me tell you something. This is how different people are and like how they see danger. So okay. there was a dude. He's dressed like nice. He has like a polo on, black jeans, some like cowboy boots. He's like an older Mexican man. And he's, he has his sunglasses on, too. He's laying on the floor. And the guy's breathing a little weird. And we stop by. And we look at this other white dude. I was like, hey, is he okay? He goes, ah, he's just taking a nap. <laughs> and I'm like, really? I, we, me, my buddy Khalif and Ray were walking. And we stop. We go, no. And we look back. We come up to him. We're, like, trying to wake him up, mumbling. Ah, blah, 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 blah. Like, oh, he can't God. talk. And then, you know, this lady who spoke Spanish Luckily, was asking him like, "Hey, what's going on? What's, what's your phone number? Like your wife's number? Anybody?" And he's, yeah. he gives like four different numbers. We're okay. Like, oh, he's not coherent. Yeah. This dude got jacked. Oh. Somebody stole his wallet, his phone, and his keys. Oh God. So he can't remember his. I, so what? When we told the firefighters what's happening, like they said, like possibly it looks like he had a stroke. Oh shit. And so he collapsed or passed out, and in that meantime, somebody jacked his shit. Damn. Yeah, but that guy was just like, oh, he's just taking a nap. I'm like, no fucking way. Yeah. And for a second, we believed him, but I'm like, no, that doesn't make any fucking sense. And yeah, we go yeah. back, and so we had to call the cops, or and the fire department came. And by the way, did you know that firemen are buff as shit? Uh, duh, it's like a fireman stereotype. They're buff. They're all tall, too. You never heard of the fireman like calendars? I did, but I didn't know that's a real thing. I thought it would be like a few select firemen. Nah, all them fools are jacked and sexy as shit. What? I... <laughs> I can't be no fireman. That's right. Like man. policemen, yeah, you never know. Policemen might toss up. Yeah, a little toss up. But firemen, dude, are always fucking buff. They're like they were all taller than me, and they were all jacked. Yeah, fucking crazy, man. Yeah, I've never felt so small in my life. <laughs> it was like four or five firemen coming asking me what's happening. I felt like I was in trouble because <laughs> they were just so they were just shadowing over me. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm, I felt small as hell. And then it turned into an episode of. Uh, Bukaki, Fireman Bukaki. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting come back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're coming on the dude that got a stroke. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> What's your phone number? <laughs> <laughs> if you don't tell me, I'm going to come in your face. <laughs> that's, that's, a ter- that's a terrible, s- a hot scenario. <laughs> Well, this guy was so drunk, he was like looking at Khalif. <coughs> hey, you're a good man. Aww. You're such a good man. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, all right, guys, sit down. No, sit down. 
<laughs> but he's like wobbling all Damn, over the place. Damn, poor guy. Pretty sure he had a stroke, and then they people robbed him. Uh, speaking of seeing someone uh, collapse in the middle of something, uh, one of the main reasons why I never ever you ever like drop e uh, no okay so I, I also have never been a pills ecstasy uh, any of that guy um, specifically because way back I feel like when people were just when when ecstasy was beginning to get cool uh, I was at a club majority Asian club and uh, I just saw this guy all of a sudden dog middle of the dance floor start seizuring <gasps> middle of the dance floor fucking foaming at the mouth all that shit fell to the ground seizuring. And we're like, oh, God, this man had a negative reaction. Maybe it was a bad, I don't know what the fuck. But, uh, yeah, not for me. <laughs> it's it's pretty nuts, man. So my buddy, he was saying about the one. He was, he's, a, he's a doctor, and he told me this story where he was at a club, and he says, like, as a physician, one of the most annoying things is, like, number one, he's off the clock. But if he sees somebody he, that needs help, he's going to help them. But he hates it when people lie. Mm. So because as a physician – you need to tell them the truth so they can assess what the fuck is going on. Yeah, yeah. So he's at he's at this club, <laughs> and dude is fell over seizing, mm-hmm. foaming at the mouth and everything else. And he's like, "Fuck, okay, let me go help out, check out this guy." And he looks at these dudes that are around him freaking out. So everybody, everybody, calm down. I'm a doctor. Look, so what drugs did he, did you guys take? And they're like, "We don't do drugs." And he's just like, he goes, "Okay," <laughs> you know, because he's irritated. Yeah. He goes, "I'm not a cop. Yeah, I'm a <laughs> yeah. doctor. Yeah, what did he take?" And they're like, "We don't do drugs." He's like. <sighs> I'm not a cop. Yeah. I can't arrest you. It doesn't matter. I need to w- assess the situation. And then they tell him what he does or whatever, whatnot. I think it was like fentanyl or something. Oh, God. And so <laughs> out of nowhere, he's like trying to help this dude out, seeing if he's okay, if they need to give him like that little shot or whatever, whatnot. The epinephrine. Yeah. And so somebody comes up, starts grabbing this dude's legs and starts shaking it. And he looks at him. He goes, what the fuck are you doing? He yeah. goes, I'm just trying to help. He goes, Get the fuck away from here. What yeah. the fuck? So his friend started grabbing his legs and shaking it to wake him up. He goes, what the fuck are you doing, dude? Ooh, okay. He goes, I'm a dog. I don't need this. Right. He goes, and he starts getting mad at him. He goes, what? I'm just trying to fucking help. It's like, what? What am I here for? You know, so they had to come over and they're all lying saying that he didn't do drugs until finally they're like, what the fuck is it? It was fucking fentanyl or something. God. So annoying. You ever had surgery? I had. I The only surgery that I had was obviously this, the eye shit. Uh, what do you call it? Oh, LASIK. LASIK, and then I had a. I was like, what? what, what? I was like, what? Obviously, the only thing obvious about your eyes is that you're fucking Asian. I was like, what was this? <laughs> I had this thing where it slanted my eyes even further back. <laughs> I said, really round eyes. I was like, hey, more power to you, my yeah. brother. <laughs> <laughs> Embrace that <Yeah>. shit. <laughs> I had a uh, cortical steroid shot in my back. Okay. Uh, because when I got into a car accident in my Tesla, a semi truck hit me. And it displaced a few ribs. E. So it's like a permanent pain that I have. So I had to get a steroid shot to reduce the swelling and the pain. Oh, okay. And then when I got that shit, I remember uh, I asked these ladies, uh, the person who was the anesthesiologist, I was like, hey, do you, she goes, well, you might, you, you're probably either going to sleep or you're going to stay awake, but you won't feel anything. And I was like, well, do people stay awake or do they fall asleep? They're like, well, if you're strong enough, you'll probably stay awake. I was like, I'm gonna stay awake. Okay. Right? I was like, the fuck? What do you yeah. mean if they're strong enough? I'll fucking stay awake. Uh, uh, all right. I took that shit as a challenge. So as she's going in, you know, they do the, the the shot, they clean up the area, they do the cortical shot or whatever, whatnot in this operation. They put the little mask thing on me before they do that. Yeah. And I remember I was talking to myself. I was like, damn, I don't feel sleepy at all. Mm-hmm. I'm like, dude, the mind is a powerful thing. Yeah. And I remember saying that line and then I felt someone touch me. I was like, <laughs> fucking fell asleep i oh, had no fucking idea cool. and she was like oh, sweetie you've been asleep for two hours cool. <laughs> but i was telling myself in my head dude the mind is powerful you could do whatever you want if i don't want to sleep i don't have to sleep yeah. i was out for two fucking hours dude. brains are cool dog dude maybe you were like out there fucking just like surfing through different um, like universes and shit and like parallel universes and you didn't even know. I didn't. But you could, you're the one who could lucid dream. It's been a long time. I wish. Here's something interesting uh, before we start talking about lucid dreams. Um, I think Veda for the first time now. Dreams. Yeah. Like I think babies can dream. They just don't remember, you know. And she for the first time now has been vocalizing <laughs> stuff that I know isn't reality. <laughs> And she doesn't realize it's a dream yet. So we woke her up from, you know, it was like the morning. We're chilling. She just woken up maybe like 10 minutes ago. And she was like, Daddy, Daddy, there are two butterflies on my fingers. Two butterflies on my fingers. And I was like, 
oh okay baby with two butterflies she's like she's like yeah she was like you you remember we she's like we went to the park there were two butterflies on my fingers i was like I looked at you, I was like, oh shit, she had a dream. And she's telling us about it, but she thinks it's real. I don't remember that moment as a kid. Like, how Me do neither. How do you tell the difference from reality and whatnot when you're a child, right? Yeah. Because everything feels real at that exactly. point. Wow, she was like, I had a butterfly. What if she starts talking to a wall and there's nobody there? Oh, dude, let me fucking tell you, my guy. First of all, I love this guy. Second of all, <laughs> when we were in Canada for Thanksgiving recently, right? Oh God, uh, we're we're she, Veda's looking at the door. Oh hell no! There was a gla- There's like this kind of like a glass blurriness on Chia's house, her family's house front door. Okay, Veda's looking out the window. I'm like, what are you looking at, Mama? What do you see? She's like, a boy. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you see a boy? What's he look like? She's like, a boy and a girl. I'm like, oh, that's cool, baby. That's cool. Um, what what do they look like? She goes, the girl's a ghost. <laughs> You're fucking lying. <laughs> because you know Veda loves Halloween right, shit, let me right? Tell you something. I will never see that child ever again. You're out of your fucking mind. There's no fucking way. That's actually one of my biggest fucking I know, fears. I know. Because, you know, Veda, like, as I've, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but Veda loves Halloween Veda, shit. Veda, you're a bad girl. <laughs> no, no, don't do that. I can't. Dude, I'm sweating right now. Okay. I hate. No, no, but check this out. Let me take it next level. She goes, the boy, is a, the boy is a ghost. And I'm like, oh, yeah? And I'm like, what about the girl? She's like, the girl's a zombie. <laughs> okay. And she's just staring, dog, out the door. <laughs> and I don't know if she's playing games or she's actually seeing something. I went down a rabbit hole of watching these like recorded documents of these kids who are suddenly speaking about people yes. who have lived in the house that they live, but Ooh. they never fucking knew about Ooh. it. And they're three-year-old kids yeah. saying, they're like, oh, what's her name? And they say the first and fucking last name. And it was the person who died in the fucking house. Yeah. I will no, not. I got, I got the chills. I, I believe in that shit 100%. Yeah, yeah. That shit creeps me out. Kids be seeing some shit, dude. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think, you know, a part of me feels like maybe we all kind of have that gift when we're younger. And then some people hang on to it and some people don't. Um, I'm pretty sure I've talked to you about this, but there was that one old man I met um, on a plane. And we're just talking for a long time. And he said he always kind of had this gift where, you know, people who had like crossed over uh, spirits and shit would uh, he saw them all the time. And he was like, you know, once you've really embraced it, it's like it's hard to uh, get rid of. OK. And he said uh, there were times where when he was really doing it, really open to it. He would just go into like, I don't know, a Macy's or something. And he would just feel the presence of like all these different spirits. And he said to the point where he would be like when they know that you can see them, they kind of like will look for you. You feel me? Because they want to be seen. These spirits and like, um, you know, these like these just these people that are, you know, in between whatever. Right. So he said sometimes he would literally be driving through an intersection and like maybe it was an intersection that someone died in a car accident or something like that. And someone would be at his window. Like us would be like, oh my God, hi, you can see me. And he'd be like, oh, no, thank you. And just drive off. <laughs> it's like, I don't. He's like, I'm not in the mood today. But the spirits would be like, uh, like basically tapping at his window like, hey, well, hey, you can see me. Hi, 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 what's up? And he's like, no, 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 not today, please. Because they haven't talked to anybody in so long. Yeah. Or it's like few and far between, you know. What if. I think I would be more okay with it if these spirits. If they could do that, but they just can't do anything to me. Because if they're just around and I can yeah. tell them to go away, they have to go away. Mm. It would be nice, but I'll just be like, hey, listen, when you were alive, you were probably really annoying. Because like, <laughs> you're annoying me right now. Well, <laughs> you know, I tried to. There were a couple times when. Now, this was before Veda was really talking. So it was just more my imagination than anything where I'd be trying to rock her to sleep and I'd kind of see her like looking at something over my shoulder and I knew there was nothing in the room and I just kind of be like, okay, babe. But I would just, I'd be like, all right, well, look, if there's a spirit in here, thank you for not bothering us. We've been here for two years without the baby. So thank you for being nice, right? Whatever. And just kind of tell myself, okay, look, it's just no one's harmed us or messed with us so far. Everything is cool. We're chilling, right? My boy used to live in this house in Compton and they swore it was haunted. And, um, 
Because, like, every time some laundry room where every time they would close something, it would open, even when no one was there, whatever, whatever. <coughs> they just started calling him, like, Mr. Jenkins or something like that. They'd been there doing laundry. They'd hear a door slam. They'd be like, hey, Mr. Jenkins, how are you? Just talk to him and just carry on with their laundry and just like it was nothing, you know? Like, he was just a guy kicking it. No. There's none of that. <laughs> no. No. I don't I don't fuck around with that type of shit. I would be fucking cleansing that whole house immediately. Unless they come through and they're like, hey, listen, I just float around mm. and don't mind me. I won't watch you jack off or anything. <laughs> I just want to chill in this kitchen and watch you cook. And that's it. Hey that's my cool. guy, I just float around. I just my guy, I just be floating, dog. It's like, okay, but I jack off a lot. Okay. Are you going to watch me jack off? Okay, and what if he does? Then I would just be like, hey, man, I'm going to have to exercise you, dude. So <laughs> and, you... and he's like, hey, guess what, bro? You need some exercise, too. <laughs> and I like, you get to stay. That was really funny. <laughs> that was really funny. We'll try funny. this on for size. What if this is what you hear? Hi, David. I watch you jack off. <laughs> <laughs> then I would be like, why are you talking like that? <laughs> Because I'm a horny ghost. Talk normally, please. <laughs> Fine, what you want? <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> <Hell> attitude. <laughs> but what if it's like a super? What if you looked up, uh, like you found the previous owner of this house, fucking beautiful, like a model that got that OD'd on coke or something in that house, right? And then you found out that's who was like giving you like ghost hand jobs at night and shit. Would you still exercise that demon or would you let it? That's different. <laughs> <laughs> that's... <laughs> That's very different. She's not a ghost anymore. She's my caregiver. She's your best friend. <laughs> She's my best friend. That is amazing. If she, if I just wake up and I just see this ghost hand, mm -hmm. just bow, 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 and she goes, I love this. I'm like, listen, how long will you be here for? Mm -hmm. Right? Forever. Forever. But sometimes I get sleepy. So I need you to let me sleep sometimes. Let's ask you this. She gives you amazing, amazing ghost hand jobs okay. at night. But <laughs> she torments and scratches Mariel. <laughs> like scratches her back and like yanks on her hair while she sleeps. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> what do you do at that point? Baby, take one for the team. <laughs> Every day I wake up with my missing hair. I have no idea why. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I had a great sleep, babe. She just looks at me. The ghost goes, I can leave, but <laughs> no more blowjobs. Oh, man. I was like, two years. <laughs> <laughs> Mariel just had to deal for two years. Mariel's bald. <laughs> bald by then. What happened? I don't know, babe. <laughs> what? what about you? <laughs> Amazing. It's the, the ghost turns into whatever celebrity crush that you have. Wow. Right? Unlimited blowjobs whenever you want. But she punches Chia oh. <laughs> in her vagina. Oh, wow. no. Five times a night. Five times a night. That's a lot, man. Separate, fine. Three times, separate times at night. <sighs> That's tough. <laughs> That's tough. Really good blowjobs? The best. Oh, man. We might have to have like a conversation. <laughs> like a ghost conversation. <laughs> with, with Gia? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just everybody. Like a seance. We're all like, yeah. I fucking call like Tyler the celebrity medium. And like we like have a conversation with the ghost and with Chia. And be like, look, baby. You're going to get punched in the vagina a couple times a night, all right? I just need this for a year. <laughs> it's just one year. Just a, a season, a summer. <laughs> right before she starts, she goes, bow, bow. And then she just floats over <laughs> oh to you. Oh, my God. That's tough. Wow. You're a terrible husband. If you were going to, look, leave my children alone. <laughs> but, but my wife? But the wife? Up for grabs. Soccer and a couple times in her coochie is okay. She'll be fine. She'll be fine. She's all right. She's a, she's a trooper. <laughs> well, guys, that wraps up this episode of Dudes Behind the Foods. Hope we left you with something to think about, all right? <laughs> the special Halloween episode. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching. Make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, all that bullshit. I'm glad that whenever we can leave you with some really, you know, deep, thought-provoking, um, spiritual, beautiful, contemplative, Sweet and spicy sauced up 
thoughts, all right? Make sure you like... I already said that. All right, y'all, bye. Yo, it's the